Good morning. Welcome to Second Unitarian Church. I am Shauna Wommeldorf, a member of COVES, Covenant of Earth and Sky, the 2U Pagan Ministry, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. Today, we are in person at the Admiral, at the Lake, and the 2U Sanctuary, and continuing to meet virtually using Zoom. We ask everyone's indulgence for the complications of a three-part service. We're glad you are here, whichever way you are attending. We are continuing to require masking in the sanctuary in an effort to make our space welcoming to those who are most vulnerable to COVID. We appreciate you joining and centering the needs of those most at risk. We especially welcome newcomers and visitors this morning. Finding a new community and making new connections can be challenging. Please know that we are excited to have you and look forward to getting to know you. If you're new to us today, please note that in the Zoom chat or mention it in person during conversation after the service. If you would like, there are blue mugs you can use to signal to others that you would like them to come up and say hello. Our worship today is led by Reverend Jason Lydon along with John Rice as our worship associate. Music is provided by guest sol soloist, Caitlin Lee and director of music, Carl Kennedy. Our time together requires a large group of people who make possible the worship, the music and the technical production. They are listed in the order of service and we thank them for their ongoing service to our congregation. So we have a couple of announcements this morning. The, on December 11th is Music Sunday, which is also our cookie sale. So enjoy the beautiful music Sunday, Sunday, December 11th, and afterwards purchase a wide variety of homemade cookies to enjoy or give as gifts. Music and cookies, this is a wonderful to you tradition. Cookie bakers and volunteers are needed to help on the day of the event. Help plate cookies or assist with the checkout payment. Bakers can make as many cookies as they like and then drop them off before the start of the service. A sign-up sheet is on the What's Happening table at church. There's also a sign-up genius link, which is in the Anvil or on the 2U Facebook page. You can find that link. And you can also um, contact Kate Friedlove or Barb Haley for more information. And tomorrow, um, next week, December 4th, the church will be decorated. And so we will be collecting warm items on our mitten tree. Um, that is new hats, gloves, mittens, and scarves. Um, at the end of the month, we will share these warm items with the organization Cradles to Crayons. I now welcome John Rice to lead us in our call of worship. Karen Universalist congregation, a community of children, youth, and adults, a people of many beliefs and traditions bound not by the specific list of things we believe, but the values we share. Whether you are joining us for the first time or for the thousandth time, you are welcome here. Whether you believe in God some of the time, all of the time, or none of the time, you are welcome here. Whatever your race, whomever you love, Whichever way you move in the world, however much money is in your pocket, you are welcome here. I invite you, when you feel ready, to take a breath in and out. As the music begins, let us enter into our service together.
In just a moment, Harris at the Admiral and Jobson at the church will light our chalices, the symbol of our faith. We light our chalices this morning with these words from the Reverend Kimberly Tomchek Carlson. Recognizing the beauty around us and within us, in voice and spirit, we gather to light our chalice. May we savor the beauty of our abundance and diversity, always cherishing one another and our earth. May we remember to inhale the lushness in life, knowing that we are a people of beauty. Harrison Jobson, would you light our chalices, please? Please rise in body or in spirit and join us in singing hymn number 21, For the Beauty of the Earth.
join me in reciting our covenant. The words are on your screen. We covenant to build a community that challenges us to grow and empowers us to honor the truth within ourselves. We will be generous with our gifts and honest in our communication, holding faithful to a love that embraces both diversity and conflict. Called by our living tradition, we will nurture spirituality within a vision of the eternal, living out our inner convictions through struggles for justice and acts of compassion. Please join us in singing number 123, Spirits of Light. Well, we're having some issues with our Time for All Ages video, uh, but it's an important video for the rest of the service. So I'm going to give you a version of it uh, without the pictures. But in this story, this is a, a Buddhist koan, and we'll talk a little bit about more about what that means uh, when we reach the sermon section. But in this story, we come upon a green parrot small, sweet, caring, patient, thoughtful green parrot. And this green parrot has noticing that in the forest near where it is, a fire is starting. And that fire is consuming all of the trees that are growing around. And the green parrot thinks to itself, gosh, I need to do something. I need to figure out how to put out this fire. Oh, it looks like the video might be ready. They'll do a better job than me. So let's do that. That's true. Called Parrots and Eagles. The story is adapted from the Chicago Tales. Parrots and Eagles. Parrots and Eagles. The story is adapted from the Chicago Tales. A collection of Buddhist stories from India. Once upon a time, a long time ago in the Asian forest, there lived a little green parrot. This parrot loved the forest. She loved the great trees and the dappled sunshine. She loved her friends, the squash and the hand eater. She loved flying through the forest canopy and looking for young fruit and branches. Sometimes when she was feeling adventurous, she would fly up and out of the forest. From there, she could see the river, which ran through the valley like a silk ribbon, and the mountains, which surrounded the forest their tops disappearing into the clouds. Sturdy goats lived in the mountains, and giant eagles built their homes there. One day, the parrot woke up from a nap and found that her nest was surrounded in smoke. The forest was on fire. Quickly, the parrot flew up very high, and looking down saw that the fire was spreading quickly. Soon it would consume the whole forest. Oh dear, said a deep voice next to the parrot. 
That is very sad. Parrot looked over and saw it was a giant eagle perched on a nearby mountain ledge who had spoken. It's a shame, really. It was such a nice forest, continued the eagle. But don't worry, little parrot. You can stay in the mountains. Here you will be safe. But my friends, said the parrot, sloth and anteater and all the monkeys and deer, they can't escape. What will happen to them? The eagle shrugged a bit with his large wings. The parrot soared above the forest, fretting as the fire spread. And then she got an idea. She dove down into the river and then flew back up again high, right over the fire. She shook her wings, and a few drops of water fell onto the flames with a hiss. Quickly, she drove back into the river and repeated the process again and again. Dive, splash, fly, hiss. With all of this strange action, it caught the attention of some of the other eagles who joined the first eagle on the mountain perch. After watching several rounds of the parrot diving and flying, putting on a little flame here and there, one of the eagles shouted, that will never work. Can't you see it's useless? Your wings are too small. You should give up. Without slowing down the parachute back, I may be small, but we're not small together. Together we can stop the fire. Will you help me? Eagle shuffled nervously. I mean, sure, it was a nice forest, but it wasn't like they lived there. And all this diving into rivers and flying over flames looked a little dangerous. The mountain ledge was safe. Then one of the eagles dove off the ledge and into the river below. Just like when she caught a fish there, she rose out of the river, her wide wings shimmering with water, and splashed it down onto the flames below. Yes! <laughs> yeah! cried the parrot, and she dove back into the river herself. One by one, the other eagles followed, diving into the river and carrying water to put out the flames. It took all day into the night to find that the last orange flame disappeared and the smoke vanished into the clouds over the mountains. The exhausted little rain parrot slumped against her new eagle friend. See, said the parrot, I knew we were not small together. You were right, said the eagle. Together we were bigger than you ever imagined. The end. I hope you enjoyed our story for all ages, and we will return to that story during the sermon. Each year, we make a commitment, a pledge to support the ministry of this, our beloved church community. In addition to this contribution each Sunday, we take a collection so that we can share with those who are doing justice work beyond our walls. Even though we're not all able to come together in person right now, you can still give generously. And there will be a phone number on your screen shortly, and you can follow the text prompts to make your contribution this morning. For the month of November, we've been sharing our plate with the Unitarian Universalist Service Committee. We've heard great work or heard great stories about their work over the last few weeks. This morning, though, we will hear some words from Sean Wobbledorf, as we do on the last Sunday of each month, highlighting the work of one of the ministries of our church. Shauna, want to share with us about Coves? Hello, everyone. Um, I am Shauna Wobbledorf. I co-lead Coves with Janice Dashwick. And this is a very appropriate service to have us talk to you because we are studying the sixth source with Reverend Jason, which is Earth-Based Traditions. So COVE stands for Covenant of Earth and Sky. We are to use pagan ministry, which is a CUPS chapter and CUPS stands for Covenant of Unitarian Universalist Pagans. We recognize Earth-Based Traditions and rituals that honors the change of seasons as well as the masculine and feminine energies associated with each of those Sabbaths. We recognize the two solstices and the two equinoxes, as well as four others in between. We also offer discussion book groups, book groups, and UUA curriculums. We honor many paths, including Druid, Heathen, 
Wiccan, Eclectic Pagans, and more. Coming up, we are going to be celebrating the winter solstice, Yule, which is the longest night and the shortest day of the year. We will be honoring the dark to bring in the light on Zoom. That is December 21st at 7 p.m. And all are welcome. You may find the Zoom link on the To You web calendar, the Anvil, the To You Facebook page, as well as the Cove's Facebook page. And today, hopefully people are there in the Palmer Room. There are two more tables representing two other committees. One is Religious Education, and the other one is ARC, the Anti-Racism Committee. So be sure to stop by and see those people. Hopefully they are there. Blessed be. Now I invite you to join me in reading our offertory words. The words are printed in your order of service and are on the screen. This church is the community of ourselves. Its energy and resources are our energy and resources. Its wealth is what we share. As we contribute to the life of this community, we affirm it and enable its participation in the larger world around us. The offering will now be generously given and gratefully received. I invite you now, wherever it is that you are, to join me in the spirit of prayer and meditation. Let us begin by breathing together. Try relaxing the muscles in your shoulders, releasing the tension that might be building up in your neck. Unclench your jaw. Breathe mindfully into this moment. We begin in thanks. Thankful for the breath in our lungs, the beauty of our earth and the strength of this, our beloved community. We hold in our hearts those who care for family and ill health, those who live with grief or chronic pain, those struggling with addiction or illness, seen and unseen, we are with you. For parents and teachers and all those whose primary spiritual practice is caring for children, we are with you. We pray for our neighbors in prison, for those who are struggling to stay afloat in the midst of poverty. We are with you. Pray for all those living in harm's way. We pray for our planet and commit to work that will lead us away from the harms of climate chaos. As war continues to rage, we pray that wisdom, compassion, and empathy guide the leaders of our world. May they and we be instruments of a just and lasting peace. Our lives are truly blessed by those who knowingly, with curiosity and courage, face their final days. 
as we keep hearing stories of gun violence in our own city, in gay bars, in Walmarts, all around our country, we know that we can find solutions to conflict that don't involve guns. We know that we can create solutions by building up our communities to nurture one another rather than take one another down. Into this, our shared silence across space, I invite you now to speak the name of anyone you wish to lift up into the loving support of our community. With our deepest compassion, let us hold in our hearts those named and unnamed, those remembered and those forgotten. Let it be so. Amen, and blessed be. During our ritual of lighting candles for joys and concerns, we do want to continue maintaining our safety with one another. In the Tusitu Sanctuary, you're invited to come forward and light a candle. And as you end your time of contemplation and candle lighting, we invite you to use the hand sanitizer that's available for you. For those of us at the Admiral, I invite you to come forward to take a pebble from one bowl, hold it tightly in your hand, putting your energy into the stone, and then knowing your joys and sorrows to be shared by this community, let it go lightly into the other bowl. And for those of us on Zoom, join in by sharing your joys and concerns in our chat window. And we will light a single candle representing all the unspoken joys and celebrations that we are sharing. This is now time to come forward.
we hold all of these, our shared joys, celebrations, concerns, and sorrows close to our hearts. John, would you share our first reading, please? There are many names for power from within, none of them entirely satisfying. It can be called spirit, but that name Im implies that it is separate from matter, and the false split is the foundation of the institutes of domination. It could be called God, but that God of patriarchal religion has been the ultimate source and repository of power over. I have called it eminence, a term that is truthful but somewhat cold and intellectual. And I have called it goddess because the ancient images, symbols and myths of goddesses as birth giver, weaver, earth and growing plant, wind and ocean, flame, web, moon and milk, all speak to me of the power of connectedness, sustenance, creation and healing. The word goddess makes many people who define themselves as quote, political, unquote, uneasy. It implies religion, secularism, and can be mistaken for the worship of an external being. Goddess makes, also makes many people who define themselves as spiritual or religious uneasy. uneasy. It smacks of paganism, of blood and darkness and sexuality of the lower powers Yet power from within is the power of the low, the dark, the earth, the power that rises from our blood and our lives and our passionate desire for each other's living flesh and the political issues of our time are also issues of the spirit. Conflicts between paradigms or underlying principles. If we are to survive, the question becomes, how do we overthrow? Not those presently in power, but the principle of power over. How do we shape a society based on the principle of power from within? A change in paradigms in consciousness always makes us uneasy. Whenever we feel the slightly fearful, slightly embarrassed sensation that words like goddess produce, we can be sure that we are on the track of a deep change in the structure as well as the context of our thinking. Thank you, John. And for those who didn't catch it, that was uh, Starhawk, a visionary and essential pagan leader uh, who has been shaping modern paganism for years now. Uh, so grateful to hear her words. Our second reading this morning is a poem entitled We Temples in the Heart by Unitarian Universalist Patrick Murphy. We have seen the great cathedral stone laid upon stone, carved and cared for by centuries of certain hands. Seen the slender minaret soar in dusty streets to raise the cry of faith to the one and only God. Seen the placid pagodas where gilded Buddhas squat amid the, the temple bells and incense. We have seen the tumbled temples half buried in the sand choked with verdant tangles, sunk in corralled seas, old truths toppled and forgotten. We have seen the wadded huts, excuse me, the sweat lodge hogans, the wheeled yurts, and the ice age caverns where unwritten worship raised its knowing voice. But here we build temples in our hearts, Side by side we gather, we mix the mortar of the scattered dust of the holy of the holies with the sacred water of the Ganges, lay Moorish alabaster on the blocks of Angor Wat and rough hewn Stonehenge slabs, plumb Doric columns for strength of reason. Square them with the stern Protestant planks and illuminate all the Chartier's win jeweled windows 
and the brilliant lamps of science. Yes, here we build temples in our hearts. Side by side we come scavenging the ages for wisdom, cobbling together as best we may the stones of a thousand altars, leveling with doubt, framing with skepticism, measuring by logic, sinking firm foundations in the earth as we reach for the heavens. Here we build temples in our hearts, a temple for each heart, a village of temples, none shading another, connected by well-worn paths, but alike on sacred ground. Let us hear our anthem. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. What a gift to get to hear your voice. I must say that I feel like I'm sort of moving back in time this morning. I have only once preached simply with a computer, even at the height of the pandemic. I got to be with David Martin generally or somebody else, but usually David Martin in the sanctuary leading service but I appreciate the flexibility we have that it allows me to preach via Zoom. I'm so grateful to everyone who is involved in church via Zoom. Whichever way one participates in our church community, it is truly a blessing. To those gathered in the sanctuary today, along with our amazing guest musician, I hope you are having meaningful time together. It was also a joy to be at the Admiral only last week. It's amazing how much variety we have in our worship experience. It takes a strong church to sustain numerous platforms. I hope that you feel proud of what it is that we are doing together. I hope you take a moment from time to time just to marvel at how wonderful our congregation is. We got our stuff and everybody does. 
and we are a loving congregation striving to open its doors widely and welcome both longtime stewards of the church and brand new visitors who are just finding us on their spiritual journey. During this season of gratitude, I am deeply grateful for each of you creating our church together. This morning, we have two different stories about animals to reflect on. Both of them are adapted from Buddhist koans. You may remember that we've talked about koans in the past. A koan is essentially a Buddhist parable. There is a deep lesson involved in the story, even if it seems a bit simple or sometimes not quite finished. What each person learns is up to them. Before we talk about the story from our time for all ages, I want to share another koan with you. This time, this one is from the Zen Buddhist tradition. The earlier one we heard from was from an Indian Buddhist tradition. Once upon a time, a man was walking through a forest. He saw a tiger peering out at him from the underbrush. As the man turned to run, he heard the tiger spring after him to give chase. Barely ahead of the tiger running for his life, our hero came to the edge of a steep cliff. Clinging onto a strong vine, the man climbed over the cliff's edge just as the tiger was about to pounce on him. Hanging over the side of the cliff with the hungry tiger pacing above him, the man looked down and was dismayed to see another tiger, this one stalking the ravine far below. Just then, a tiny mouse started out from a crack in the cliff just above him and began to gnaw on the vine. At that precise moment, the man noticed a patch of wild strawberries growing from a clump of earth near where he dangled. Reaching out, he plucked one. It was plump and perfectly ripe, warmed by the sunshine. He popped the strawberry into his mouth. It was perfectly delicious. Now take a breath in and let it out. Sit with the story. Allow its lessons to come to life within you. Breathe and ponder. The sixth source of Unitarian Universalism added to the mix of the others in the mid-1990s affirmed spiritual teachings of earth-centered traditions which celebrate the sacred circle of life and instructs us to live in harmony with the rhythms of nature. One thing I think we all know for certain is that the rhythms of nature are struggling right now. Humans have done some devastating things to our planet, and that devastation is continuing. I find myself wondering often, are we midwives and doulas bringing in new life and a new world? Maybe. Or are we hospital, excuse me, hospice chaplains offering comfort and care as we feel powerless over what is a seemingly preventable death. Maybe that. Let us return to our cons. In the first one, beautifully narrated by a UU service committee staff person and with amazing images, we witnessed a courageous and fearless parrot immediately step up into action against the flames destroying the forest. This parrot knew that it would be unable to put out the fire alone. But that didn't stop her from taking first action. Yes, the fire was too big for one parrot to put out, but this parrot, undeterred. When have you been this parrot? When have you known that there was an overwhelming task in front of you, but you knew you were going to take action 
to get even an inch forward. I can imagine some of us face these moments at work. The responsibilities feel like too much, but we persevere anyhow, doing the very best we can. Those of us in helping and teaching professions know this challenge particularly well. But you are not alone. Regardless of what your job is, there can be things that come before you that seem insurmountable, but it doesn't matter. You spread your parrot wings and you start taking action. You know it will be hard, but you know that the work must get done. And this doesn't just happen in our paid work. This can happen during parenting, joining struggles for justice, navigating mental illness, quitting, smoking, and absolutely when we think about what we are going to do in the face of climate chaos. There are certainly times when we are this courageous parrot. We are, all, we are not, though, always the parrot. Being the parrot all the time is unsustainable and likely leads to burnout. Sometimes we're the eagle. This doesn't make us any less valuable or sacred. It is just part of how we live our lives. Think about a moment when you've been the eagle. Did you shut down someone's idea about how to make change? Did you doubt that anything you would do could possibly make a difference? Did you wait to see others taking action before you did? I like to think of myself as someone who will rise to the occasion and be helpful when an unforeseen crisis appears. And there are times when that's been true, but there are just as many times, if not more, when I take a back seat, follow others' lead. I've gotten lost in hopelessness, or simply needed to see someone else act before I had the courage to do so as well. As we see in this story, the eagles are essential. One need not have started something in order to make a difference. One need not be the first person, person in the lead in order to be part of transforming the world or healing some brokenness or just putting out a dangerous fire. I think these two cause go so well with our sixth source because they make me think about how we relate to our planet. Our pagan Unitarian Universalist community offers us a theology that says the earth is central, necessary, and sacred. We are responsible to care for the earth, and what's more, the earth cares for us in return. We are sustained by a mutual relationship with the earth. I wonder if there might be pagan stories that nurture your spirit. I was honored that Janice and Shauna took some time to talk with me about what was most important to lift up when we think about and reflect on the sixth source. One of the pieces that stuck out to me the most in our conversation was the idea that the pagan gods and goddesses are not necessarily literally believed in by all pagan practitioners, but rather there is a deep connection to the archetypes that get expressed by each deity. One might have a particularly strong connection to the story of Gaia and the beauty of creation of birth stories. Another might connect more deeply to Thor in the Norse tradition, or maybe Bridget in the Celtic theologies. One might find meaning in ancestor worship in African indigenous traditions. There are a seemingly endless list of pagan deities to build relationship to and to learn from. Another thing I really appreciate from the conversation I had from Shauna and Janice is that connecting with earth-based traditions is not an invitation to take part in cultural theft or cultural misappropriation. Instead, this is an invitation to connect to the stories that we are invited into. We've talked about cultural appropriation before and we will do so from time to time because it's a useful reminder. The easiest way to think about it, I think, is to consider religious traditions as a house. 
If your family already lived in the house, by all means, come on in. The fire is warm and there is drink to be shared. If it is someone else's home, though, it is important to wait for an invitation and then behave well once entering. We just passed the holiday of Thanksgiving or what some indigenous communities call the National Day of Mourning. Most religious traditions native to North America are not open traditions. The door is not open. And unless you are part of a specific indigenous nation, your I am not invited to take part. We can appreciate the house, but it's important not to enter without an invitation. As we celebrate Earth-based traditions that shape our Unitarian Universalism, it's important to do so with an understanding of cultural appropriation and settler colonialism. It's tricky, it's messy, and we are inevitably going to make mistakes. The blessing though of doing religion together, what we do at 2U is that we have one another on this journey to ask questions and to call each other in as we explore truthfully, honestly, responsibly. So let's return to that second koan that I shared. A man goes over a cliff, fleeing one tiger only to find another hungry tiger below him. Lo and behold, a mouse shows up and starts nibbling on the vine that the man is using to survive. And then the man notices a perfect strawberry, which he reaches for, and then gets to enjoy its perfect, warmed, plump flesh in his mouth. The story ends there. I imagine that some of you are thinking, but what happened to the man? I think we all know what happened to the man, even without the koan spelling it out exactly for us. There are just as many essential lessons in the story of this story as there were in the first one. This one, though, makes me think of the role we might play as hospice chaplains for a dying planet. I want to believe that we can reverse all the horrors of climate change and on certain days, I believe in that and feel hopeful. Other times, I think this con might have the most important lesson available. Yes. Things look bleak. Yes, the inevitable is coming. Yes, there are hungry tigers everywhere we look. But then we can look around us with new eyes. When we take a moment to breathe, when we practice mindfulness and embrace all of what is immediately around us, we have the opportunity to embrace or taste the delicious. When is the last time you had a full belly laugh? When is the last time you appreciated the sweetness of the moment you were in? Even if things are not always going to be good, can you take a moment and appreciate the blessing that is right there in front of you? I wonder if our earth-based traditions might be able to call all of us, regardless of whether you are pagan or not, to pay attention to the ground we travel upon, the trees that grow around us, and the bounty that is available if we just reach out our The man in the story got to taste a strawberry, but maybe you get to taste compassion, gentleness, or joy? What would it take for you to reach out your arm and live in just this one moment? Our principles and sources are being revisioned by the Article 2 Commission. There are some big changes coming, and you have seen some of the proposed language in our newsletters or in the UU World magazine or any number of other places. This Sunday is the last in our series about the six sources. After the new year, we will start to reflect on the new language being offer offered by the Article 2 Commission. It has not been passed by the UUA board yet, but I do expect there will be lots of conversations about the proposed language 
a general assembly this summer. Barb Michael, along with the denominational affairs committee will be collaborating with me on a discussion for church members. I really appreciated getting to reflect more deeply on our principles and our sources together. I hope it has been helpful for you as well. As our earth starts to go to sleep for the winter, we're closing this chapter of our church season. And so let us sing together. Now the day is over. Please rise in body or in spirit and join us in singing hymn number 46, Now the Day is Over. I invite you now to rest your hands upon your heart or clasp hands with those you're sharing your life with in these pandemic times. And as you do so, I want you to feel the spirit of life and love flowing deeply in your spirit. May you feel the wisdom of our earth-based traditions that shape and guide us towards a relationship with the earth that centers love, compassion, and possibility. May we, with love, care, and compassion, go forth. Go in peace, my friends.